Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's the Full 40 with Chris and Rob, part of the Stay Tuned Network, brought to you by Nova Insider. It is Sunday, February 6th at 9.22 in the morning. Uh, So at this juncture, before we get into anything else, at this juncture, we'll talk about this first. We don't know what the result is on Colin's injury. We'll get to that in a second. But before we do, Rob, where are you and what are you drinking? Well, this podcast is also brought to you by the Westin Hotels in Philadelphia, guaranteed to bring you a good time every time you're in the city of brotherly love. Anyway, I am in the Westin in Philadelphia, decided to spend the night after the game last night after some good afternoon beverages with yourself and Brian. It was a good time. I am drinking at this point. Well, God, I'm out of coffee. I have no coffee. I have no water. Also brought to you by Aquafina. Fuck Pepsi. Um, Yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I'm in a hotel. They don't even have little bottles of alcohol I can pull from a mini bar anymore because they got rid of all that. One, they would say because of COVID, but two, also because I feel like people didn't actually use those aside maybe from the consultants. So anyway, I literally have nothing at this point. So here Not we sure. are. Rob I'm doing Rob, this. I'm doing this on an iPod, on an Rob, iPad. Rob is going to be dry mouthing it through the second half <laughs> of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Basically. As far as I'm concerned, dry January is over. Um, and so I just killed this bottle of Frangelico. The that, whole bottle this it, morning. It, it, yeah, there was nothing left. <laughs> I put it in my, I put it in my co- coffee. So a little hazelnut liqueur coffee, um, which is delicious this this Sunday morning. All right, we got to get right into it. Obviously, a good win yesterday that was sullied dramatically by Colin hitting the floor like a sack of bricks. Oh. Um, yeah. and I feel like there was a collective gasp in the arena, um, in Wells Fargo, uh, yesterday when Colin hit the, hit the deck, um, and then had to get helped into the locker room, went straight to the locker room, got taped up, did walk back out onto the court, not, not onto the court, onto the bench, um, under his own power, seemed to yeah. get up a couple of times to try and move around a little bit, but never really looked like he would have been close to entering the game. Yeah. Um, after the game, Jay Wright said that x-rays would be necessary and that those would happen today. So perhaps we will get some type of media today. Again, today it's Sunday, it's 9.30 in the morning. So perhaps we are going to get some media today or tomorrow morning uh, giving some prognosis for Colin. For the remainder of this podcast, we will operate under the assumption that Colin will not be back that soon, but will be back this season. That's kind of where I'm going to yeah. go with this, that he might be back for a, a Big East tournament, NCAA tournament run, but not to count on him for the next, at least the next week of games. So Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not doctors, but we're going to pretend like we know what we're talking about. I mean, look, it's an ankle injury. You saw what happened. The one thing I was worried about, because I, I kind of looked away, so I missed the whole thing, but I saw it on replay. I was worried it was a totally non-contact injury, and it was an Achilles. Obviously, that is not the case at this point. He clearly stepped on one of the Yukon guy's foot, clearly rolled his ankle. This can go, I mean, anybody who's had an ankle injury, this can go so many different directions. You know, one of the things that comes to mind is, you know, Kawhi Leonard in 2017 when he uh, rolled his ankle literally on uh, – one of the Warriors feet, which like keyed ultimately like the Warriors, you know, another great Warriors run. They were crushing them at the time and he was out for a while. So, you know, this could be a multi-week thing. Best case in my mind, it's a week, but I don't know. I I think this is going to linger a little bit, even if he is back and playing it's, I don't know. This seems to be like a recurring theme. Now we had hand injuries a few years ago. We seem to have a run of ankle injuries at this point. So in terms of what this means for, for the rotation, a um, lot of lot of questions there. It's, in my not, mind. Good. it's, not, it's good. not good. It's not, not good. good. It's not good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there was a, um, yeah, I'll bring this up. We had a conversation in the car ride down uh, yeah. y- yesterday that was just like, hey, not this year, but long term, would Villanova have benefited if Colin and Jermaine didn't come back? 
And ultimately yeah. where he got to was no. Like, yeah. I think we ultimately settled on no. Like, the players needed leadership, and Colin and Jermaine were the only players who could provide that leadership. This could have been a lost year of Villanova basketball if they don't come back. Right. And then, and then, like, because the other argument is that them not eating up 60 minutes a game of, of at least of game time allows 60 minutes to get totally. allocated to other players that even if that doesn't work out for this year benefits them for next year, blah, 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 blah. That was the whole conversation, right? Nothing against Colin or Jermaine, just kind of like trying to tease that out, play that out. Well, <laughs> we decided that that was definitely not good to be good. And then, and then sure as shit, um, Colin gets Yeah, I, Colin gets I had hurt. the same thought. I was like, son of a bitch. Like it's just some terrible, terrible karma on our part. Like, yeah. good God. It's, yeah. yeah. That was, so, we we so put look, that thought out there into, into the ether. And there it I is. am going to put into the ether though. So you said we put that into the ether. I'm putting into the ether that Colin is not having, does not have a season ending injury. So I'm putting that into the ether. Um, yeah. So, but either way, we only talk about one week in front of us. So when we do our game previews for St. John's and Seton Hall later in this podcast, we will be working under the assumption that Collins not playing um, in those games, uh, but we'll see. But we yeah. do know that Jay said that Justin is going to be good for um, Tuesday's game against St. John's. He did not play yesterday. He was in, he was not dressed uh, to yep. play yesterday. Um, and then and Antoine was back yesterday, although there was a minutes well, conversation, which we have to have a conversation about. But before we get into any of that, so now that we've gotten kind of gotten that Colin conversation kind of behind us, let's talk about the experience yesterday being at the Wells Fargo Center, went to Xfinity afterwards, the whole yeah. nine yards. Oh, um, felt, good to be, felt good to be back. It did feel really good to be back. I think there was an announced crowd of like 19, 19 yeah. and a half thousand. It felt, seems about that, right. That felt right. Yeah. Um, definitely good energy entering the building. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and at the start of the game, one thing I do have to ask um, is did Villanova change its student section um, strategy with Wells Fargo so. center? Because I when we so. were students, when we were students and I feel like now I'm like saying back in my day. For, no, seriously, dude, yeah. we're, we're old as shit. Back in my day, we occupy both sides of the students, uh, both, both behind the baskets. So, so, yeah. so it was, and it was 3000 tickets, I believe that were allotted to students in the um, like 15 years ago. Is that correct? Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. And I don't think it is that way anymore. I think it was changed so that, I don't know, it's either a portion of the second side or maybe it's even just one side, but it, it was clear when the students filed in that it was definitely concentrated on the same side as the band side, which was cool. Cause it was definitely a lot more packed yeah. Granted, it, it did not result in any more cheering or energy after the game started. Okay. Yeah. So we were sitting there wa- yeah, we were sitting there watching the game. So you know, we're getting ready for tip, the band's going, we're getting some hype from, I don't know whether it's DJ 007 or whoever it may be. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with the student body. I even took some videos. We got a lot of sway going on. We got like a lot of good movement, a lot of good energy. And then I swear tip happened. And it was as if the entire student section just went to sleep. And it's like, all right, well, like, when are we getting on these buses back home? Like, yeah. there was no cheering, like, not even limited cheering. There was None. no cheering. None. None. Not a None. let's go Nova. Nothing. Like, come on, guys. Like, give me something. I'm not expecting the world, but, like, something, anything. Just no energy whatsoever. And, 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 there's, and just to be clear, there's no excuse. There's no, like, built-in excuse here, right? Like, like oh, you could say, oh, man, you know, they had to wear masks. No, they no. Even if they had to fucking wear masks, they didn't wear masks. So just to yeah. be clear on that, like there wasn't yeah. there wasn't a mask in sight. No, no, no. Um, you know, other than like the cheerleaders and the dance team, who, which is so absurd. But like or, whatever, right, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so so there was not a mask in sight in the student section. And we saw before the game, everyone was getting liquored up. So yeah. like so like there was a big pregame in the parking lot. There was as definitely there, as there should be good energy entering totally. the building. It's not a break game. It wasn't any, there's no excuse. It's two ranked opponents. So it's not like, oh, we're just killing a bad yeah. team and like so no one cares and everyone was checked out. No, two ranked opponents needed this coming off a loss. Every single box was checked for this to be a good atmosphere game. Yeah. The student section sucks. Yeah. Okay. Terrible. Let me just be clear on that. The student section sucks. Okay. The student section needs to be cheering every single 
possession. Every single possession. And we couldn't Dude, even get I, every I'm gonna, fifth I'm gonna lower the bar. I'm gonna lower the bar. We couldn't even get every fifth possession. I don't even I don't even need every possession, to be honest. Based on what I saw yesterday, I just need like some sense of life. Like anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. I'm sorry. We, we, the we bar is not we, there. The bar is not there. They need to know how far away from the bar they are. Oh my god, it's really bad. We did get a fuck you Yukon chant at several, the start. Several. Several. Which I was like, okay, okay. You know, you know, little little you know, going with the, the curses, but I, I'm down for it. I like the energy. And then uh, no, it just went away. So yeah, whatever. It's there terrible. Was no, there anyway, was, it's, actually, those were the only, the fuck you Yukon chants were the only chants that were audible from the student section at any point yeah. in the time yesterday. I think there was maybe kind of one wild. Let's Go Nova. <laughs> kind of wild. All right. It was whatever, sweet. horrible. Really bad. All right. Um, should we move on, move on from the students? But yeah, move on from the students. Overall game experience, very positive. Um, yeah. Um, th there was definitely a lot of fans in the arena. Um, there was a good compliment of UConn fans. I actually kind of, when I was younger, I used to hate seeing opposing teams fans at our home games. I kind of like it now. I like that. It, it, like it adds a little bit of vibe. Like they go on a little yeah. bit of a run. You hear from them. Like, I kind of like that. Um, so, so there was definitely a good amount of UConn fans. They always travel well. So I didn't, they do. I didn't expect anything less. Um, and then, and then the Xfinity Center afterwards was definitely. Uh, oh my gosh! Popping. Yeah, that was definitely uh, a good vibe going there. Uh, Real good so, energy. Yeah, I yeah. hadn't been there in obviously a long time, but like <laughs> even even before then, I still hadn't been there in a while. And I was like, okay, I didn't know how many Nova fans were going to trek over there, but we went over there. It was pretty packed, like the yeah. whole place, and it wasn't like there were other games happening. Like people weren't there for a Sixers game. I'm sure Brian's going to pop in and say. Oh well, there was a Wings game later. I'm like, yeah, sure, Brian. Whatever crowd the Wings draws, all four people. I believe there um, was a Flyers game later, but I didn't see it. Oh, was there? I black. didn't see any Flyers. I didn't see yeah, orange yeah. or black colors in the uh, yeah. in the fans. Yeah, um, Brian has confirmed it was a Wings game, um, oh, okay. but it was it was pretty cool. I will say one quick one other quick note. Um, really liked our seats. So this was the seats. The tickets in general for this game were quite expensive. So. You know, we try to go lower bowl. The lower bowl prices were like 150 plus, like even weeks out. So people wanted to go to this game. So, you know, I don't know. For me, the Wells Fargo upper deck is so, so steep and you feel like you're a million miles away. So I really try to avoid it. So we ended up getting a real good deal, which were phenomenal seats. Ended up being, we got a corner suite, which I'm like, not to tutor on horror, but like we got a good value on the seats. Like we yes. did not pay, like we didn't pay an exorbitant amount of money for those. No. Granted, we didn't get any free food or drinks, so whatever, it's fine. But like good angle, like good vantage point. We were high enough so that even though we're in the corner, we could see everything pretty well. We were on the student section side, which is the outset. I was like, this is going to be great. We're going to pick up the energy. We picked up all the energy in the first five minutes and then it was gone. But Regardless, just a fun environment. We got to sit in that kind of first row in the suite. So all in I, all, I was check like, the box. I'm glad you brought it up here because I was I wanted to say like, hey, where are you can find us and let people know where we were sitting. And then I was yeah. like, this comes across like we're being highfalutin, but like totally, the tickets totally. were totally cheaper than yeah. oh, way cheaper <laughs> than the lower bowl. Yeah. So and they, were, they of... were on par with a lot of the upper deck seats actually yeah. too. And I was the, like, huh? all right. The the other thing I'll just say is the Wells Fargo Center does not help the noise thing at all mm, like, and never yeah. has never has it's a poor acoustic arena it's, it's, yeah. it's a very bad acoustic environment um yeah. so so that doesn't help things either but we've also watched plenty of student games at the fin and can and can be clear that the student section does suck yeah um <laughs> before we move on Confirmed. from before we move on from game experience rachel yeah. what are you seeing on social about the game experience So sorry, had to pop in here. Um, one of the Welcome. I I of the four of the four people that make up the full forty, I was the one that didn't go to the game. Um, but I obviously followed the game and you know was on social. My favorite thing I saw was what appeared to be R.J. Cole's mom, R.J. Cole of UConn's mom, complaining that Villanova did the Yukon family and parents dirty and gave them nosebleeds. And she's got a picture. We'll, we'll probably put the tweet up in like on our, on our Instagram. So you want to go check it out later, but it was hilarious because she, she tweeted multiple times about it. 
um, the, she, she included a picture. They were really high up. Like the kids looked like ants and her, the best part was that her tweet was, you know, along the lines of, we can't even yell loud enough to, for them to hear us because we are so far away. Like no matter what we do, it's like, it doesn't matter because they don't even know we're here. I mean, the second, the it. second deck of, of the Wells Fargo center does feel like you are like literally in the clouds. It's really far. It's, it's really far. I mean, and when you see the picture, it's like, it's like, you know, like this, like yeah. Rob was talking about, like the steep and like, you know, yeah. the people are like this big and yeah. I mean, it was just fun. It was very funny. Um, again, we cannot confirm a hundred percent that this is actually RJ Cole's mom, but I'm pretty sure that her handle is mama Cole and the profile picture is RJ. So I'm going with a strong, <laughs> with a strong assumption that this is in fact his mother. So, so, so I, I do have to, I have to ask Brian because Brian, you have season tickets, um, for, for Villanova games and you are oftentimes or not all the time behind the visitor's bench. Can you confirm or deny that that players that opposing players fans are are relegated to the second deck? So obviously I can only speak on what I know. So I sit at the Wells Fargo Center, I sit in row five. Rows one, two, three, and four are reserved for the visiting teams. And it goes seats one through eight. So it sounds like 24. Am I doing the math right? Eight. 32, 24. 32. It's in it's you know it's a multiple of something. Um, and I usually sit by those fans and <clears throat> most of the time it's fun, but you can tell their players, families, close, close members of the program. They're, they're wearing gear. They're pretty engaged in the game. And um, from my understanding is those seats are assigned to the athletic department of the visiting team. So UConn was given here are your seats. There's obviously seats up high too. So how they're dealt out is up to the school that delves them out, not Villanova. So it sounds like Mrs. Mama Cole, we'll call her. Um, maybe there's a problem. Maybe UConn's mad at her. I don't want to speak for something I don't know about. Um, or, you know, a lot of times when the players sign up for tickets, if they sign up late in the week, those worst seats are the ones given out. So maybe it's the son's fault. Um, so I, I like to be critical of Villanova where I can be. But I have to say in this case, there were visiting team family members in front of me. Conspiracy theory, is UConn sidelining RJ Cole? Mm. maybe it's one of those like they're trying to put him in the transfer portal i think so that must be it that must that's be it. it that's it that's it the only player on uconn able to score points is is the guy who they want to put in the transfer portal yeah we've we've uncovered this is hard-hitting journalism right? yeah, hard-hitting journalism. Cole 40 boom you got before, it before i get back into this cold thing uh brian what would the people do it's like guys two two rows in front of you that were wearing weird hats can you so what, they were what the like was that they were the hats you would get at like Disney World with a character's face like finagled in them, but they were husky <laughs> dogs, but they didn't have the ears. So it had like a dog nose here up top and, you know, like a strap in the back. And I liked them, but I told them I liked them right when they were leaving. I think they thought I was mocking them. I wasn't. Uh, I thought they were an interesting hat. <laughs> but like it was something that like I had that hat as a kid, but it was Donald Duck and the bill was a was like a quack thing like it was like the same style as a disney world app. there you go oh my god um okay. that's beautiful can i also hit on one other thing on social media though this relates to our social media and this is totally calling out chris because this is bullshit so i wake up this morning and <laughs> i check our instagram and i see like oh great picture like beautiful picture of the stadium and i i swipe left fucking chris's face so chris that's rachel's we, fault that's rachel's fault no no no, I but, know but, 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 but no 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 I, i'm not blaming this on rachel blame this on chris so chris chris we're eating lunch together before the game i see chris taking a selfie i'm like okay that's cool whatever no big like i'm literally sitting across the table from him and he sends it around with like the implication being like oh we should post this so That's now we've got, now we've got, now we've got, are you that or you just like to share your selfies with our, with our group text? So now I was we've showing got, people the shirt that I was wearing so they could mm-hmm, easily identify mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Because yep. I'm putting this I one on you. I was wearing the 19.9 threads, the, the 90s thread um, of the, the Villanova, the old school Villanova V with the dinosaur letters. That is a distinctive thing to wear to the Villanova game. Not a lot of people wear that, Rob. And so I want now, to- now, No, no, This, this needs to become wearing. a recurring theme there. Now we need each individual selfies, <laughs> each weekly. This is going to happen. As awkward as you can make it. All right. Horrible. That's my that's my rant. That's on you. That's on you. Rob, I said in the caption, I was like, parentheses, Rob's there too. 
You, you and, did, you did. <laughs> Literally, it was across the table. <laughs> and let's be fair, the three of us could have taken a picture together and we just didn't. The, the, this is what happens when you like, said guys. This is what happens when you said other. guys. If Rachel, doesn't, if Rachel doesn't come to the game, nothing, nothing happens for social media. Like, it's totally nothing, true. It's totally true. Nothing happens. I, I forgot uh, Twitter existed. Yeah. <laughs> we, the, the earlier game this season, she's like, did you take a picture? We're like, yeah. No, literally none. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> we wrote photos. We, All right. We anyway, to, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. All uh, right. All right. Well, so stuff. let's so let's just jump right on this. I want to hit this Mama Cole point for for just a second, because does Villanova do the opposing team's uh, parents dirty by having any tickets allotted to the upper deck? And I'm going to go with yes. Like it's the mm. Wells Fargo Center. This is a ginormous arena. Like. Yeah. Put all of the opposing team's fans, not, not fans, um, I could care less about everyone what else, um, put the opposing team's parents like where they should be, which is down on the bottom deck to cheer on their, to cheer on their children, like period. So, so I, I do think that there is a thing to blame for, for Villanova. That being said, I also am no love lost for Mama Cole, if I'm being honest with you, because she kept tweeting about, I also saw this, she kept tweeting about how they're traveling on every play and it's like, no, we do fucking jump stops. And if you're a stupid fucking idiot who doesn't understand basketball, you think that we travel every time we play everybody, they're like, Oh, they're traveling. Oh my God. But the refs never call it. And they, everyone's like, everyone's like, see the refs favor Villanova. That's like the, the common theme. Oh, the refs favor Villanova. This is proof. They don't call walks on them. No, a jump stop is a legal move that J Wright teams practice and perfect. And that's why they don't get called travels because they aren't fucking travels. Preach, so, preach. so I just need to hit that point one more time. So Mama Cole is right. She should have been down low. Mama Cole is wrong. She doesn't understand what traveling is. And but to her credit, her son's the only capable player on the UConn team right Yikes. now. Yikes! Yikes! So, you want to talk about the game? <laughs> Let's talk about the game. Let's do it. Um, so a one in one week here, um, and. There's obviously a lot to discuss about the Marquette game, um, which yeah. was an unfortunate result. But let's start with the positive result, which was the UConn game, um, where without Justin Moore and without Colin for the last quarter of the game, we blew out UConn. And the final score of 85 to 74 doesn't really do justice no, to the, to the spread of this game. This was a 15 to 20 point game for the majority of the second half. Um, and and point blank, this was just a blowout. Like we, I said on the last podcast, we're due to blow out a good team. This was kind of that, um, yeah. where a Justin Moreless Villanova um, just absolutely crushed uh, UConn. And we've been bad on the awards for the last two podcasts. So let's launch into the award. Mm. Um, Eric Dixon is obviously, obviously the alpha dog of the week because hey, he took. He took one of the best big men in the Big East and the country, imposing presences in the country in Adama Sonogo, and absolutely ate his lunch. Um, Sonogo got in foul trouble in no small part because of Dixon's play and how he attacked him. Um, so, like, some people say, like, oh, well, it's not, it's not really Sonogo's fault because he got in foul trouble and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Like, Dixon created that foul trouble for Sonogo. And then... Eric went on and put up 24 and 12, both career highs himself. So in his Ooh. biggest game against his biggest opponent, Eric Dixon showed up and showed out and, and absolutely stuffed Adama Sonogo in the lot in his lot in the locker. And that is why he is the alpha dog of the week. Yeah. I mean, he, he has to get the nod in my mind, just in an all around performance also added four assists too. So Big Dix was getting it done. Uh, <laughs> it was getting it done this game. So I will say we talked about this matchup. I think it must have been last week, and we said it was going to be challenging for him for all the reasons that you outlined because he was playing Sonogo, who has one of the largest shoulder to waist ratios in the country. The dude is absolutely jacked, and is that he's an obviously official stat? Did you that's that an up? official stat. It should be shoulder to waist ratio. It should be height, weight, shoulder to waist ratio and rebounds per game for centers. That's what you need to know. Um, but like in all seriousness, just absolutely showing up against a talented opponent. 
Um, I will say, and, and our friend Sandro has mentioned this before, Eric does a terrific job, but he still has one move, and it blows my mind that defenses can't stop it. He goes left every single time and will do everything in his power to get to the left side of the hoop and finish yeah. there. That's it. He does it effectively. He does it effectively. Like, they, know it's coming, and he gets it done. One of the reasons for that is that he does – he is a threat to shoot a jump shot. Um, yeah which does make opponents have to respect that to a degree. Um, yeah. And I don't mean a three pointer. I mean, I mean like a mid range, like, so, so like, yeah, yeah. so like if you back off and just let him go to one side or whatever, like, yeah, I'll shoot it. and don't, but he could shoot over you. So that's, yeah. that's the one reason why he gets away with doing that. Um, so frequently. And the other reason was he, he got Sonogo into foul trouble. Um, totally. And, and oh the other gosh. reason, Dixon is Dixon is <laughs> Dixon is a, a, got a got a pretty wide body himself. Yeah, totally. So so he creates space with his own with his own shoulders himself, um, and creates Sorry, room can, to take the can, little can, baby hook. The uh, the getting um, Sunogo into foul trouble was hilarious. We were talking about this yesterday. So Sunogo picks up two fouls, so they immediately sub him out, right? And his sub is like it was like a before and after of like after Shaq fit is Sonogo and before Shaq fit is uh, whoever the hell came in for him because the dude had the shoulder to waist ratio was not nearly the same. This dude absolutely needed to spend time in the gym and Dixon for sure had his way with him. Definitely just opened a lot of stuff up. So that was, uh, that was really cool to see. So yeah, Dixon getting it done there. Question that's come up is, um, and we can discuss this now or discuss it later is, Dixon's obviously put it on a, a nice run of performances, showing a lot of consistency. Are we starting to talk about NBA draft status for Eric Dixon? Headline, absolutely not. Absolutely not. While no, he's no, contributing, not he's contributing nicely to Villanova. He is nowhere near NBA draft radars because of his athleticism at this point. It's still relatively limited. He definitely need to slim down, speed up a little bit there and need to show way more consistency in terms of dominating performances to show kind of that, that upper level and show that upside that the NBA scouts are looking for. So long story short, the answer is no, Eric Dixon is absolutely going to be around for next year and very, very much likely the year after that as well too. So uh, Eric Dixon absolutely gets the alpha dog of the week without a doubt. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. Um, Shaq fit man play of the week. Let's just stay on this. Um, do we have one? It's not a great standout to me. Uh, there was a couple of steals that we made that led to runouts that I thought that's were, true. That's probably it. That that's I thought it. were pretty good. I, I, um, Caleb Daniels had his own steal runout. I think he I think led it was to probably a, the Caleb one. Led yeah, dunk. I, I like that. I like that play. Oh, it was. Still- I got one. I got one. Slater diving from behind. Boom. Slater mm, then the, keys the, a run out. Yeah, the Dwayne Anderson patented dive knock the ball loose from behind at the wells fargo center when you're up big hustle attitude play that is a patented dwayne anderson move he did it right he did it dwayne anderson probably saw it and was like ah yes yes that's the thing that's the thing that i did against that's, ucla that's back fair. in the day i think that might be it i think that's i like, the, I like the caleb run out a little bit better though just because i think it was a little bit earlier in the game so it wasn't quite as much of a blowout but Anyway, um, so um, that's, that's that. Pass the fucking ball award. Let's just stick right with it, Rob. Yeah. Um, for me, it's Slater. It's Slater. And it's, um, well, I think we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but I go back to the Marquette game, the moment, the technical foul. It's, um, you know, it, what's interesting is Slater had a, a good game otherwise in that he had 18 points. It was his best performance in weeks. We had been calling for it. But unfortunately, that moment in time, we were making a nice run and he had actually just, you know, just hit a shot and then happens to pick up the technical foul. You know, we had cut it, cut the lead to three at that point. Momentum was absolutely swinging. That game was still early on. So it was not a foregone conclusion that we were going to lose it at that point. Just an absolute momentum killer. So that to me is uh, unfortunately the, the pass the fucking ball award. Um, shit. Um, I think I might go to, I don't know. You, you uh, usually I, like, usually like the cop-out answers. You'll be like, Oh, no, Collins no, 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 or something like no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not going to give a cop-out answer. I think okay. I got to go. I'm going to go with a real answer, but I don't know if I'm going to go Slater. So I was on Twitter duking it out with people over the Slater 
thing, which I think was boneheaded. I think we could talk. I think we could talk about the Marquette game right after this. Uh, yeah. The UConn game, unfortunately, we 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 put, you know, we beat the brakes off of UConn yesterday, and unfortunately, the Colin Gillespie thing overshadows the whole entire um, the whole entire thing. Um, the pass the fucking ball award of the week, I believe, is goes to you know go with Colin or or Justin, and I'm not 100 percent sure they they did not shoot the ball well. Oh, Justin was Marquette. terrible. Yeah. And, and, and in particular, I almost want to go with Colin, which sucks because he just got injured. Um, and so did Justin. Um, I thought Colin against Marquette made a few plays that were like, he tried to shoot Villanova back into the mm. game him, mm. himself, yeah. taking treat threes off the bounce and, cr- and trying to create shots. And he can hit those shots, yeah. but he wasn't hitting those shots. Um, and yeah, I thought he played fine otherwise, but I, I, I just, we were chipping away at several points at the lead. And then, and then it was like three ball, three ball, three ball, miss, miss, miss. And that was both Colin and Justin, but I felt like Colin did a little bit more off the bounce, which I didn't like as much, but mm-hmm. yeah. Justin, I felt like shot rhythm threes that didn't go in. Um, whereas I felt like Colin was trying to create, um, and I like, Villanova is not a three ball shooting team off the bounce. Like it's, it's just never the case. Like, yeah. Like I've, and I've watched too many Malik Waynes and no offense to Malik cause he's a great player, but like in two, 2012, 2013, I think it was, or tw- no, 2011, 2012, too many times where that Malik just dribbled yeah. down the court and just tri- chucked a three ball. Yeah. Um, so I, I've watched too much of that and I don't love that. Um, yeah. And it was early in the shot clock, got out of rhythm and it was just not, it led to long run outs, which led to, them um, uh, getting transition points and our defense being a mess. I, I just don't love that at all. Like as much as I like speeding the game up a little bit, because I, I, I find our tempo to be like horrible, <laughs> I find yeah. it really to be annoying. I don't love taking a three off the bounce early in the shot clock at, when, when we're trying to chip away at a run and doing so with discipline. And Colin's not the player who, who should be doing that. He knows our system well enough. To the point where Jay trusts him to do plays like that, but that's kind of what like you don't necessarily yeah. have to do that. So for those reasons, I'm giving I'm giving that to him. I want to do talk about the Slater situation yeah. from, from the Marquette game. Um, so Slater, we get down, we get the we get the lead down to three at, off of a three ball. Slater, and we don't know the context of what happened before this. Um, true, Slater true. Yeah. turns towards the bench right in front of the referee. And according to Jay Wright said he cursed with, I, I mean, look <laughs> to, to a certain degree, like this is basketball. Like we're not sitting here with our panties in a bunch over like not understanding how basketball works. No, no, no. Right. Like we understand that players are talking the entire fucking game. Like that's part of basketball. That's Absolutely. fun. That's cool. I like that. I, and, and, and I will add that I think this team needs to show more emotion. That, mm. that this team can be such a robotic, like, like emotionless unit that yeah. the, the show of emotion that, that the, the, the energy uh, injection that Slater can bring is welcome. And when that happens, you have to take the good with the bad, which is, this was the bad, um, but it might've even been beyond the bad. It was the ugly. Like, so, so yeah. like it was, it just did not help our situation at all and i would add that it was right in front of the referee right in front of the scorers table right in front of their bench so you did everything so like you put the ref in a position where he felt like he had to blow his whistle which a lot of people said ref shouldn't have blown the whistle like let the players play the game whatever i can agree with that this refereeing crew is a known disaster in the league known to inject themselves into the game james breeding's crew is the worst refing crew maybe in college basketball so this refereeing crew is known to suck, which is all the more reason where you have to be like, I got to watch myself. So I don't, yeah, create, be situ- I don't create situations um, that, that put my team in a position where they don't win. Right. So like, it's like, that's part of it. Do it in front of the bench, which Marquette came out on fire, right? Like wh- why we need to really lay it on thick. When we're yeah. we haven't led the entire game in many yeah, points in time, a, you're before. still down. You're still yeah, down. You're still down, right? So like, so like, now's the time not to be talking shit, right? Yeah. And then what the result of this was was they go on a massive run and get up 14 at the half, 
So, yeah. so, and, so and like, look, it, it, it might have happened regardless. Yes. We don't know, but you don't give him that opportunity. Like, that is an absolute, it's a momentum well, killer immediately. It gives them the ammunition they need to say, okay, cool. Here's an opening. We got it. Thanks. Free throws and the basketball. Right. So, what was a three point game? which they were like a mess offensively at that moment. Yeah. At that moment in the game, it was one of those handful of moments where they couldn't get anything going offensively. Shaka was probably not going to call a timeout. So that causes a timeout. They hit, they hit free yeah. throws. Now it's a five-point game. They get back to what they were doing. And now all of a sudden it's 41-27. Thir- it's so yeah. <laughs> like it's Crazy. Just, it it Crazy. really hurt us in that moment. Um, but I don't give it that. I don't give it that because a Slater was the bright spot in that game. That was one. So like he was the only he was the only guy other than Caleb who helped the team win. The game team came out totally flat, and Slater and Daniels were the only players who had any life at the beginning of that game. And and and, and because I thought that at the end of the game, I thought Collins' threes off the bounce and things like that were actually more damaging because we had plenty of moments where we could have gotten back into that game and taken leads or tied the game that I think that boneheaded plays that were not that, um, where you didn't have the referee impact in the game. Ah, um, disagree, disagree, disagree. If we think about the, the origin of the award, a single moment in time, a, hey, this warranted a pass the fucking ball comment from Jay Wright. This to me is that moment. Absolutely. Single point well, time, turning point, sliding doors moment. The award is literally called pass the fucking ball. And I'm giving it to Colin for not passing the fucking ball. Like, you want to talk about the I bet, I bet, I bet Jay was, I bet Jay was angry about that, about the technical. Oh, you could tell Jay was shooting. really pissed at Slater. You could tell, you could tell on the replay that they, they kept showing Jay talking to Slater, and he had this look where he was like, like he was yeah. so pissed, and yeah. like basically held, showed restraint to Slater, because he didn't want to just totally um, throw him under the bus in front of the team. But like, yeah, that was a that yeah. was a mess. All right, all right, let's talk. Should we talk about rotation? Uh, yeah, I think we got to go back to the narrative point. Yeah. So in a game against UConn, where Justin Moore is not playing, seems like a good opportunity to involve Antoine, who, to to up to to the others' point, like he was available. You don't know if he was 100. Yeah. percent So so we'll yeah. give we'll give that acknowledgement, right? Like usually you don't go from like like not able to play to 100. percent So we'll we'll acknowledge that. Um, more 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 closely, Longino, who yeah. We checked this yesterday. Longino six five, so yeah, so Longino big. has a a body um, that has size and can play multiple positions. And he's also um, tough. I don't know if you know, but he played football <laughs> in high school. I'm not not sure if you're aware. <laughs> so so gave Jay an opportunity to dig deep into the bench. Not even that deep, but deeper into <laughs> yeah. the bench. Just, Caleb just, slots into just the dig back room. with your regular people. Yeah, yeah, your regular people. And what does Jay do? He says, I'm going to take Chris Archidiacono from 8th, 9th and put him right in the middle of it. And 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 because Chris Archidiacono, to Jay's credit, to Jay's credit, Chris Archidiacono probably played the best Villanova basketball game I've seen him play yesterday. Like Chris, Chris, the artist, Archidiacono, the creator, the archist, if you will. I all the you. nicknames. I hate you. All I the absolutely nicknames. Hate you. But that was his best performance as a Villanova. Easily, easily. 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 <laughs> He had a yeah. three from the wing. He got some free throws. Um, I think he had a layup in there. He did have some turnovers off of inbounds plays, which was like, uh, like, yeah. like uh, there's some of that I write off because it was the end of the game and we were already up decisively and like whatever, mm-hmm. but like, there's something to be said for that. Like, I, I'm just, I'm going to like, I'm going to like drop that one because, yeah. because I, because I just feel like it was end of the game loss of focus when we were up big. So I write that one off. But that's yeah. all. I'll do. Yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, but 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 Chris all of a sudden goes from you know he was getting five eight minutes as like you know backup player, um, eighth ninth guy. We talked about this on the podcast last week. That's a great role. We love that for him. Yeah, we really like that for him. We like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then all, jumps everybody. And Jay announced yesterday that if Collins out, Chris Archidiakono will be starting. It's like crazy. Absolutely crazy, which which I will say this too. I feel like there's an argument you could make where you'd be like, oh, well, Colin went down, therefore I wanted another like primary ball handler. No, that's not what we're saying. Chris Archidiacono 
basically took all the minutes before Colin got hurt too. And yeah. this just absolutely blows my mind. And it's, it's one thing I get, I get it sports, right? Like you, sometimes you got to ride the hot hand. And as we're fully acknowledging, we've been critical. We'll acknowledge when he's having a good game. Chris Arch was having a good game. He was making shots, he was making skills, disruptive, fine. Awesome. However, given how this season has played out and given how the minutes allocation has been, the mental side of things I have to imagine for Antoine and Longino has to be like, what the fuck? Like if I was in their shoes, I would be so beyond frustrated. Six minutes, six minutes is all either Antoine or Longino played in a 20 point. Well, it ended up being an 11 point game in what was basically a blowout for most of the game. That is absolutely crazy to me. And then the way the minute allocation played out was also nuts because they both played a little bit in the first half. They played a few minutes in the first half, basically sat the entire, essentially second quarter, right? The second half of the first half, and then came back in, I don't know, with like after like seven, eight minutes or something gone in the second half with a very short leash. Like, I think I can't remember who it was. I think it was Antoine comes in, makes like one like little mistake and Jay's immediately back on the bench. Absolutely crazy, absolute confidence killer. Yeah. If Jay has a dog, his dog would be absolutely nuts because of the short leash that, leash that Jay gives these guys. I don't buy it. You can't expect somebody to be like, here's five minutes. Oh, come sit for 30 minutes of game time and go back in and come on and, and be sharp. Like that's not that's not how you run an effective bench. Like I, I understand as a bench player, you need to be able to come in and start and stop, but even even the most effective bench player is going to struggle with that big of a break and just being out of the flow of the game for that long. I I'm really annoyed at this and going forward, it's going to annoy me even more because Longino and Antoine are also both effective ball handlers. They've both shown the ability to operate more comfortably in the offense. They've come a long way this season in particular. And all we're doing at this point is hampering their development. We've well, got an interesting and, week. Sorry, I didn't say. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was good. Uh, we've got an interesting week. We've got St. John's, not a good team. And we've got, um, well, who else do we have? Right there. I'll stop you there on See, St. John's. We, and we have Seton Hall. And we have Seton Hall. Like, Seton Hall is a good team. But if we're not going to get these guys comfortable, we said this, like, I feel like a fucking broken record. If we're not going to get these guys comfortable playing in the regular season in tight games now, we're never going to play them in March. And if we're not going to play them in March, what's the fucking point? Boom. <laughs> Rob Ridiculous. is mad after a game where we beat a ranked opponent, but I, I get it. I get it. And the reason I get it, we said earlier in the week, we said on the last podcast, we said the narrative goes away. If Jay plays the bench um, this week, well, he didn't, he didn't really do a good yeah. job of it. He didn't really do a good job of it. I, I actually think a good, a good example of this is Justin Moore rolls his ankle we, he then doesn't dress for the next game. Jay put him back in the game against Marquette. What the hell was that? Like, it's, it's a great point. It's a great point. Like, no like there's, said, no, oh, thank there's, God, no, there's no Moore. trust. Like, I said, to, I said to him, I said, oh, thank God, Justin Moore's back. And then I immediately said, why the fuck is Justin Moore back? He doesn't need to play. We're losing the fucking game. We're not going to beat Marquette. Yeah. We're it's, down it's crazy. A, a lot. It's crazy. Okay. When we, when we, we've had Al Ray on a couple times. He's talked about trust, right? There's clearly no trust. There's no trust, and it, it drives me up a fucking wall. No, here's the thing, though. There is trust because he plays them at all. So the, I think that actually makes it worse, is that there is trust. Jay has talked about how and, – and Jay has actually said of late, he's like, we are bad at this. He acknowledges that he's bad at getting players playing time um, sometimes. So he's bad at this. Uh, you know, he said – that's his words, not mine. I, I, I am agreeing with him on his take, um, yeah. but but they they this was a perfect opportunity in the second half of this game. You could argue that Colin Gillespie shouldn't have even been on the floor when he got hurt. Now there yeah. was ten minutes left in the game. There was still plenty of time left. Yeah. To, whatever. But now Colin wasn't there, and we still won by eleven. So like yeah. So like could have could could that have been a moment when where Jay could have bought Colin five minutes of rest in between team totally. timeouts. Totally, you could have made that argument. Yeah. What's what's your what's your ideal rotation going forward? Uh, so much of it for, is based forget on Jay. The, yeah. So much of this is based on 
Colin. In Let's assume he's out. Let's assume he's out. Let's assume he's out for the next few weeks. Who are you playing? Well, Moore is back. So Moore has back. we yep. need more. Yep. Um Caleb, I'm putting in yep. the starting lineup Start. now. Absolutely. He's yep. playing super consistent. Love yep. it. Yeah. And, and, and oh, by the way, sorry, on the Caleb note, I am now here to redeem Mea Culpas from everybody. I want the Mea Culpas from everybody on the Caleb Daniels slander. We acknowledge that he didn't play well, but we did not go as far as some of you did who said, oh, he sucks, oh, blah, 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 whatever, get him out of there, he's killing us, blah, blah, blah. Nope. I want your mea culpas. You were wrong. That's right. All right, so we got All Caleb. Right. Yeah. So those two. Yep. Samuels, Slater, Dixon is my starting rotation. That's pretty yep. easy. Agree. Like, Agree. You don't no need problem. To. Right. Okay. Don't, over, don't overthink it. Don't, don't overthink, overthink it. it. There's no need to overthink that. That's an easy yeah. starting five. Yes. Um, then first off the bench is uh, probably Antoine. Probably Antoine. Yeah. Probably Antoine. I could understand. Here's where I'm going to go with this. I could understand if because of you said ball handler, the other guy's mm, mm. I think, I think, I think Chris is a better ball handler. I think in terms of he makes less mistakes. Um, Chris, is, Chris plays mistake free basketball by and large. He doesn't do anything that great, but he, he does. He, play, he reminds me a lot of Tony Chenault in some aspects. In some ways. Yeah. Like you're not going to get much offensively, but like, yeah, he'll handle the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Tony Chanel had a better game of getting to the yeah, top yeah, and all right, that agree, stuff. But, sure. but yes. And and to be fair, if Chris Archidiacono can hit a three once a game, because the defense is going to leave him wide open. Sure. Um, then then okay. Then like he justifies his existence at five points a game, six, seven points a game. So so that's 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 absolutely okay. I could get Chris being first off the bench. But we're not talking about a sixth man role like Caleb plays the sixth man role. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. playing it like you're 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 rotating through your bench, um, kind of co- like evenly, yeah. and so so you got those two. And Longino obviously comes off, and then I keep saying this. I really think that Trey Patterson should play more. Um, yeah. I, I do. I think that Trey Patterson needs to play more than five minutes a game. No, but I think he should see active time, um, wherever because. The one good thing about losing Justin and or Colin at any point in time is we have a plethora of, of developed guards. What happens yeah. if you lose Slater or Samuels or Dixon? What yeah, happens if that happens? Because nobody, nobody, nobody's played. Nobody's right. Played. No one's played. So then you have to go along Gino at the three, right? Like, so you got a six, five guy at the three, yeah. which is fine. Jay, Jay gets fine. Yeah. That. Uh, but then like, you know, the four and the five spots, like, what do you do with that? Trey yeah. Patterson's the only guy who's he shows no interest in playing in Joku. So, so at this point, like zero, I, I'm going to be realistic in some of this Patterson yeah. at least sees floor occasionally. So yeah. like, I'd say Patterson needs to find some rotation time, but I mean, what, what are we talking about here? I mean, like, I have to say this, like you have to say like, uh, Oh, like without Jay, like, I mean, I have yeah. to, I have to, I, have no, to I mean, we're, we're, we're having, we're having our debate. What would yeah. we do as if we were in I, that I would, position? I would play a lot more of those guys in the first half of games in particular. I, I, and, and to a certain degree, regardless of the score, I could yeah. argue that you could, based on whatever the score is, you could argue that it's time for to get those guys in totally. um, because if yeah. we're losing Forget early it. in games, like Jay tends to tighten his rotation. If we start down again, I argue the opposite. I argue, no, get other guys in. Maybe they're going to bring some pep in the step off of the bench and create yeah. something and throw a different look at the defense. Uh, so I'd rather see if we start going down, like we played against Marquette, we immediately surrendered like an eight point um, yeah. deficit. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a good time to bring, I mean, Antoine wasn't available, but that's a good yeah. time to bring Longino off the bench. Give him something different to look at. Like do something different. Yeah, so, I agree. So I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. All right, we we've made our we've made our point. Yeah, we made our point. Um, should we talk about? Uh, I know we're we're running I think up we gotta, against time. Can, can should we, we do go, a little preview? Yeah, can we do a preview? I also want to just talk a little Big East um, sure. stuff right now. Um, so right now, a lot of fans would be wouldn't um, would be forgiven if they're just looking at the Big East standing and saying, okay, where do we go from here? Um, so right now, we're second in the Big East at ten and three. Providence is first in the Big East at nine and one. They play. Uh, later today um so so right now it's looking like marquette's eight and four yukon six and four i don't think yukon or down xavier lost to the paul yesterday at home um so i don't think xavier down is at all a threat 
in this conference. UConn, we have another game with, but UConn doesn't play Providence again. Um, so, and, and they might play Marquette one more time. I think they do play Marquette one more time. So there's going to be some cannibalization there. I think this is down to us, Providence, and Marquette um, for the conference. And the reason why Marquette is the only it is at three losses back of three three games back in the loss column from Providence has a chance is because they have the sweep against us. Yeah. Um, so that provides them some things. So if we go out and beat Providence twice, then then like Marquette is right back in the mix, right? So yeah. So because and of it, it is win. it is interesting too that Marquette even after their big run, you're like, oh, they're still not even like in second, and that's because they started off terribly. They started yeah. off the conference play on a, like a four game losing streak. So it's taking them a bit to get back. Right. So all of that being said, is is look, I uh, to me, I think that the two games. The, the two games versus Providence, us and Providence, the first one is on February 15th at the Dunkin' Donuts Center, is like the whole conference right there. Like, and it, it, if Providence splits with us, they're pretty much like totally driver's seat um, to win the Big East regular season title um, at, at, yeah. at, at nine and one right now. So yeah. um, if we win at the dunk, then all of a sudden, the, the I think it might be the last game of the season or second last game of the season, um, at Providence is like, or sorry, at home versus Providence is like the game of the year. Yeah. Uh, so all of that's there. I, I, I mean, like, look, I, right now, everyone's jockeying for seating and whatever. As Villanova fans, we've been the Big East regular season champion enough and have gotten that one seed in the Big East tournament enough that I think that there's probably, I think it means a lot more to Providence or Marquette mm. to, to get that. Um, I don't think it means as much for us. We're more interested in NCAA tournament seating. Not to say they aren't, but just like yeah. we are. And 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 to boot, I, I, I happen to think that the two seed getting the seven o'clock start on Thursday in, in the Big East tournament is actually way preferable. Yeah, <laughs> certainly from a fan's perspective. That's yeah, sure. from a fan's perspective of being able to go to game and go to the game and the whole nine yards. Like so, I I, I just you know to me it's like not the end of the world if we yeah. don't win the Big East regular season championship. Obviously. Um, would love to shut some Friar fans up who don't understand Ken Palm at all um, <laughs> because they're still like 45th in Ken Palm and they can't wrap their head around that the margin that they win games by ha- is a predictor of how you're going to do yeah. going forward. Yeah. They don't understand efficiency margin at all. None. No, they don't understand it at all. They keep talking. I keep seeing Ken Palm is a fraud from, from Providence fans. I'm like, Ken Palm is not like, he's not writing the, the thing. Yeah, he has it's just algorithm. Stats. It's just, just stats. What's the stats? in the math, <laughs> the model, and the model computes what it is. And it's also, by the way, proven to do a pretty good job at predicting it because if you're in the top 20 of both offense and defense, that's pretty a good predictor of the, the actual field of teams that are going to win a yeah. championship. So <laughs> the Providence fans don't get it at all. And they, they counter with, they counter with, well, winning close games is a skill. I agree. It's a skill. Sure. It's not a skill that's going to be picked up in Ken Palm. It's a skill that's going to be picked up in your resume. Yeah. So, so anyway, anyway. I, like that's it. Um, two big games this week because of circumstance with Colin being out. So we play St. John's at MSG on Tuesday. St. John's, since we played them, has actually put together a handful of good performances. Um, um, they, they played Providence tight. Um, they beat uh they beat did they beat DePaul? I forget who they beat. They beat somebody they beat at Butler. Home. They, beat, they Butler beat Butler yesterday. They beat Butler yeah. yesterday at Hinkle, which is decent. You know, Butler's terrible, but like yeah, winning at Hinkle is not easy. Um and they beat, they George, beat Georgetown. Okay. So they so they so they and they thro- did they throttle Georgetown? I think they throttled Georgetown. Yeah, yeah it was, ended did. up a 13 point win, but it was, it was they, pretty comfortable. They're five and six at conference, tied with Seton Hall. Um and so that is eighth in conference play, but they are playing a little bit more like the St. John's you'd expect. Um, their defense is, uh, you know, hounding, hounding guys and turning people over. They're creating opportunities. This is not the game that we want to have our primary ball handler or our secondary ball handler out for. <laughs> um, so, so it's, 
it's all of a sudden now becomes more interesting because uh, of the I, 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 Josh I Alexander. No, 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 Rob. No, Rob, you're, this you're is a over, very losable game. You're, on you're over. You're overthinking. Very losable game think, on Tuesday. Wait, very wait, losable think, game. Let's let's talk about their. Yeah, sure. Every game is losable. Let's talk about your point since we played them last. Okay, we beat them. You know, two weeks less than two weeks ago, right? Since then, they lost to Providence, and their two wins that you just made. They beat Georgetown and Butler. Come on. It's not like this team has turned it around. They beat Georgetown and Butler. Those aren't good teams. I I, I get that. I get that. I get that. It's a losable game because Collins out. I get it. I get it. It's a style of play. Whatever. It's a style of play. Ridiculous. They speed you up and turn you over. Down, having half a primary ball handler and Justin Moore coming back is not going to be 100%. Antoine is not 100%. And Collins out. Like that is, there's a recipe for disaster against Posh Alexander. Okay. Sure. I, I get that. I, I totally get that. But let, like, let's not play up St. John's like they're some big behemoth. I'm not they're calling this, them the a same, big behemoth. The I'm saying that because of the way they play the game, they create problems. They press. Okay. What happened at the end of the game against UConn? They pressed. We were up big. The game was in hand, whatever. They turned us over a thousand fucking times. Like it is not, it is a very losable game on Tuesday. And I would not be surprised if we come away with an L. That's fine. I just don't, just don't make this into a bigger deal than this. It's St. John's, St. Yeah. John's. We should win. We still should win, but it's now all of a sudden a weird game now. Every game is a weird game because Colin's out. That's, that, that, that's kind of my point. Like every game is a losable game because Colin's out. And, and on that topic, Seton Hall comes up um, on, on Saturday and all of a sudden, Seton Hall turns the calendar to February, and what happens? They're two and zero. Oh. Um, one of those games was uh, like similar to what you said before, was at Georgetown, um, where they struggled, but they got it done. And then they have they host Creighton. Creighton just beat UConn earlier in the week, so you're thinking, oh, maybe Creighton's turning it around, and they're making their, you know, they're positioning themselves for their run um, to the NCAA tournament. And what does Seton Hall do? They go up 28-7 in the opening, like, 15 minutes of that game. <laughs> Absolutely Crazy. beat the brakes off of Creighton. The final score was, it was like, 19-point spread. And yeah, it wasn't, like honestly, that. It wasn't, wasn't that close. Uh, so, Seton Hall demolishes it. So, now they're 2-0 and in February. They turn the page from January. They're, they're absolute hell month. And now, all of a sudden, they're starting to gel together. Bryce Aiken's still not back from his c- concussion. Um, but they're starting to figure out the pieces without him. Uh, and now all of a sudden, Seton Hall looks to be an interesting opponent to play at the Wells Fargo Center on Saturday now, too. What's and, your prediction? And, and, without, and without Colin. Um, so if we had Colin, I think this is an easy 2-0 and week. I think this yep. is our this is our last easy two in a week. Without Colin, this is a one and one week for me. I, I think we're going to drop a game. I I I I struggle to say which one it is because because like I could see us getting it together and St. John's is undisciplined enough that sure. like we we get it done versus St. John's. Yeah. And then but then Seton Hall kind of like has it together. They start to you know they're starting to feel themselves and they start to play better. They're shooting the ball a lot better of late, etc. And they put the hurt on us. I could also see it going the opposite way, um, where St. John's, you know, turns us over a lot and creates a mess for us um, in in the St. John's game on Thursday. And then we lock them, we lock Seton Hall down on on Saturday. As a result, there's almost like payback for the other game. So uh, it's hard to not see a one-on-one week without Colin. It's just like so it, it complicates matters so much because like this is the week. This is the last week that you could reasonably have expected us to go two and zero, oh, um, because following that, all of a sudden we're at Providence. We play Georgetown again um, at UConn, and then and then we have a bye. We have a bye weekend, and then and then versus Providence and at Butler. So like every game features a top twenty-five team after this week. So you know, I, I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm going to go one-on-one as well. I think similar thought process, just hard to pick, you know, which one we end up losing. I think with, without Colin, you just don't know how, how things are going to shift out, um, how things are going to play out and kind of where that unpredictability is coming, going to come into play. So one-on-one for me as well, if I'm picking one, I'd say eh, we'll win against St. John's lose against Seton Hall, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> if we go, if we do go two and zero. 
this week, then 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 the show then it's a showdown then down the stretch for the Big East regular season championship because we have that um, 15th game uh, the the February 15th game at the Dunkin' Donuts Center, which is which will be an electric environment. The Providence fans have been awesome all year, so um, totally. and 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 for good reason. They have a lot to cheer for. Uh, so yeah. it's been it'll be very very interesting. Um, in terms of podcasts coming up. Um, I don't want to overpromise here, but we do have some guests lined up. Um, one guest to talk bracketology sometime soon. Um, and then we're working on getting um, Rob Douster um, from um, uh, from Field of 68, um, who also is a he's a Yukon fan. He, he went to I think he went to Vassar College, but he's a he's a he grew up a big Yukon fan. So he's a big Yukon guy. Um, so we want to try and get him on. We're, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if it's going to work out uh, scheduling wise, but uh, so I'm not over promising, but we're looking to have some future guests on the podcast. We'll probably talk to Fanta or look to talk to Fanta again before the Big East tournament. Uh, so that's, 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 that's what to look forward to on the podcast. Uh, one, one final thought before we go, we should have mentioned this in the social media segment. We forgot to, there's a great video on the Insta on the Barstool Nova account. Villanova fans continuing to show that we have problems with hills. This is just a flood of students trying to make it up to the Bryn Mawr train station, trying to get to the um, trying to get to the game yesterday. I love it. People slipping, people sliding. A couple bevs will absolutely do that to you. But Villanova fans, continue your good work on the hill front. I don't know why this has to happen all the time it's fun it's phenomenal i'm all about it i'm all about it we just need more hills for villanova <laughs> fans to, to deal with let's go villanova oh, fans God. literally trying to die on this hill <laughs> yes yes, <laughs> yes uh, phenomenal. all right all right that's it find us on spotify um you know however long they're still around um <laughs> apple podcasts YouTube, SoundCloud, um, at the full 40 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I think we technically have a Facebook account, but I haven't checked. I think we do too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so find us on, on all those places. Um, thank you everybody for listening. And as always, let's go. Nova.